Hello, everyone, and welcome to Collider Movie Talk. Hope you had a great weekend. Congratulations to the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots on making the Super Bowl. And if you play for the Vikings or the Jaguars, don't worry. You have a great viewpoint to maybe see a Han Solo trailer. I don't know if it's going to happen during the Super Bowl, and we're not talking about that today, but we do have a lot of great stories to get to and a great panel here to talk about them. Look at all these smiling faces. Right over there is the well-fed Christian Harloff. I have a pink shirt on. Yeah, we almost, uh, almost match. Almost. Whatever. Okay, thanks for playing along, John <laughs> Schnepp. Hey, I saw Paddington, too. A lot of people were wearing pink shirts. because Did Paddington, Paddington do too. your laundry as well? Yes, he did. <laughs> awesome, man. I love that movie. I, I, did, I couldn't believe how much I love that Me movie. Too. How smiling. adorable oh, is that little I, bear I when he goes to jail? Love. When the little oh, bear oh, is in oh. the jail pajamas. It, it happens in the trail. He's in jail pajamas, <laughs> yes. and I just want one. Uh, I, I, I was really astonished at how much. It's, it's better than the first one, too. I mean, well, I love the first one. I love the first one as well. The second Second one, the bear does go to jail, and somebody who I don't think has ever been to jail, but his Twitter account is going to be there for another 32 hours. Jay Washington. Yes, I'm us. still in Twitter jail for 32 hours. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I you went in on know. some certain supporters. I'll tell you about it later. We'll right. get off there. Was some clapping back. There was some clapping back heavily. <laughs> uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I can see your tweets. I feel the love. I just can't respond to you till at least tomorrow. So it is what it is, right? <laughs> I love y'all though, but. I just, it's hard. 32 more hours, and he gets to walk out of jail, and I'm sure Brad Pitt and Julia Roberts are going to be waiting in a very nice car to give you a ride back to social media heaven. We have a lot of great stories to get to. Like I said, our first one involves a new young director named Steven Spielberg. Deadline is reporting that Steven Spielberg's next movie could either be Indiana Jones 5 or West Side Story. The filmmaker is eyeing Disney's untitled Indy 5 with a plan to either precede or follow it with a movie soon after. And we're hearing now that that other movie could be his longtime passion project and adaptation of West Side Story. The indie film has been in the works since 2015 when Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy confirmed plans were in motion for another sequel, which is currently dated for July 10th of 2020. So the question now, will Steven Spielberg move forward on Indy 5 first or West Side Story first? Christian, I know that you're like me. I hope we want to see another Indiana Jones movie, right? I, yeah, I want a mulligan from four. I understand anybody who says that, uh, you know, after the four, you got a bad taste. It should just be done. But I think that there's more to it. I think that um, this is going to be the first movie. And again, this isn't to, to pile on to George Lucas, but he had a lot of involvement. If you read all the stories, what happened, Frank Darabont had a really great script for four. George Lucas poo-pooed it with a lot of stuff that he wanted to do. And a lot of things that we got that we didn't like were George Lucas ideas. And S Steven Spielberg's such a good friend that he was, he was really playing along with what George wanted to do. I want to see a version of Indiana Jones with Steven Spielberg doing what he wants to do. I think that that's going to be interesting. But I also think that West Side Story, Steven Spielberg's got a lot of years left in the tank. He can do that in a year. He can do that in six months. He can do it two years whenever he wants to do it. Harrison Ford, you got a time limit as far as how much he wants to be involved. You know, it's just like he, he might, and honestly, physically, how much he can be able to do it. So I still think, I still like the idea to where they, if you want to hand it off and you want to make a franchise out of this again, you do what they did in Young Indiana Jones. You start off with... Harrison Ford doing his adventure, but you see flashbacks very similar to what they did in Last Crusade with River Phoenix, but you do it with whoever you're going to pass the torch to, and if the audience gets on board with it, then that's how you continue the next couple of movies on. Yeah, Shev, I know you're not that high on an Indy 5, but did Christian just sell you on maybe a good starting <coughs> point to frame that film? Yes, but I still don't want to see it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, if, they, if I find out that they're doing that, I'd be like, all right, I'm, I'm way more Curious. into it. Right. call me curious yeah i didn't ask for a blade runner sequel either and i got one and i loved it so i'm not saying i'm against right. it 100 percent. but after that fourth one i'm in that camp i'm I understand just i'm that. sorry yeah. man yeah i yeah. forget yeah. It. like you have to just literally retcon and be like so after the last crusade what if the gophers had their own movie <laughs> the last i would totally see that yeah, instead sure. of this fourth. are you are, are you not you're not in on an no, 85 either? style of buff no but he's not going to be in five. I don't care. Those, you think he ruined the entire <laughs> franchise? That, I mean, it's certain things you have that happened in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, that made you not want to go that way. Like you said, retcon it. Do go back if you're going to do that. Hey. Something happened. People, we changed everything around. They're doing that with other films. It's mm -hmm. hard to go back, though, because of the age of Harrison Ford. But, Christian, what you're saying is interesting because the way that they did frame the young Indiana Jones Chronicles, a TV show, is like a 90-year-old Indiana Jones would come up to some kid, bore him in a dentist office, and say, hey, here's a great story about my youth, right. and then somebody else is playing for the bulk of the movie. Is that what you're suggesting right now? Uh, not for the next one, but... 
taking the franchise into it. So, but, but so Harrison Ford gets one more adventure. Give him, give him an adventure. I mean, he doesn't have to be running around as much as he was. I mean, very similar to what like Stallone did in Rambo Four, right? He just stood on the back of a truck and shot. He didn't run really. He ran. He ran like in one scene. He shot a lot. Uh, yeah, but but that's what I mean. So you like let him do stuff that he's able to do. But I think that, and again, I, I'm not saying this is my choice, but let's say it's Chris Pratt, right? Mm -hmm. You go back into the, you know, maybe there's one scene that he reflects on when he was younger, and it's Pratt. But basically, uh, Lucasfilm telling you, this is going to be our next Indiana Jones. What do you think? And then we as the audience can say, okay, because they were going to go with Shia LaBeouf taking it into right. And everyone yeah. said, much. Yeah, much. I was like, no, no, no don't do it, yeah, please, yeah. God, don't do it. I would rather see them move forward. I don't. I, to be honest, you mentioned it. They already did that in the TV series. Like, here's my, me as a young kid. I mean, they stuff. did it at the beginning of Last Crusade, too. Right, so, and, right. and it worked very, very well in that movie. And a lot of people bought River Phoenix as a young Indiana Jones. But Mutt was going to be a different character. I don't need to see that. I, I would rather see Indiana Jones as his real age. He's like 80 or whatever. Right. And he's with his new team of the Raiders of the whatever. And, and you say someone transfers over Not from just that. someone. I want a team he's of a teacher. people. I want a teacher. And I want him with like four or five students who go on a massive, one last adventure with him. He's part <laughs> so of it. So the old dude just trying to crack dead. a whip, it's though? Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the whatever, whatever. But is he an old dude trying to crack a whip and he throws his shoulder out? Yes. <laughs> right. I want He's all that. A I big skull bus. Bus. <laughs> yeah, I want all that. I want... Uh, you, you think know, they'll like, even mention uh, Mutt at all? <laughs> you didn't mention Mutt. did you have a kid? Right. Uh, it starts yeah, out turned out, the turned out it wasn't mine. Mutt and Marion. Mutt and Marion. He's at the gravestone with them. and He's a teacher. They're dead already. They're dead at the beginning of the shot. I mean, it is... Look, Indiana Jones 5, everybody's going to be older in this movie. I do want to see one more actual adventure. I think Harrison Ford has proven recently movies like The Force Awakens and Blade Runner 2049 that he can still have some action chops and he can still move around and do some things. Obviously, you're going to have stunt work for the crazy set pieces, but you guys cannot tell me the curiosity, the, the, the alone, the factor that you guys are in a movie theater and you see Indiana Jones 5 right there versus if you had Spielberg's West Side Story, you guys are both going into Indiana Jones hey, When you're a jet, you're always a jet. Right. <laughs> Is he going to fly a plane? That's all I want to know. Uh, just hopefully, Is if we're gonna fly, <laughs> right. no, fly, yes, land, no, right, right. 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 Okay, we're going to move on to our next story, and that is about some more award shows that went out last night. Speaking of awards, we are going to be here live very early in the morning, the butt crack of dawn, to watch the Oscar nominations. They're announced live at like 5.38 a.m. here on the West Coast. It, it, it's an unholy hour, but we're going to be up to check those out. And then at 7 a.m. on the West Coast, 10 a.m. for you East Coasters, we're going to be doing a live episode of Movie Talk where we recap everything that went down with the Oscar nominations. We're going to have some predictions go through all of the main categories so get excited for that in the meantime we do have the producers guild awards and the sag awards were handed out this weekend the producers guild top prize went to the shape of water that's the one that won the producers guild however for the sag awards a different movie won and it's one that's been cleaning up at the award circuit that'd be three billboards outside ebbing missouri uh sam rockwell also won for that movie as did francis mcdormand allison janney and gary oldman also took acting prizes with the sag awards this weekend so the big question it's short it's sweet if you have the shape of water and three billboards outside the ebbing missouri jay they seem to be the two movies that are mm -hmm. lining up to be the front runner for the oscar mm -hmm. win for best picture which one's taking home the statue it, at this rate it's looking like uh three billboards will take it Shape of Water is a good love story. It crosses boundaries and whatnot. But Three Billboards has such a poignant message, and its cast is so riveting, and it, it brings you in. And everybody is talking about this film. And again, the awards are, the awards are showing that. So I really think Three Billboards will take the best picture at this rate. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a nice contrast, Christian, because with Three Billboards, there is a, an overarching political message, and we know that the Oscars love rewarding those kind of movies, but The Shape of Water, diversity in the cast, a very interesting story, diversity within the love story itself. So which way is it the tea leaves reading in the Harloff household? I think there's no question. God bless you, R2. Sorry about that. I think there's no <laughs> doubt whatsoever. 100%. Do you ever get sick of Star Wars? Like, 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 do you ever have the R2-D2 ringtone and you're like, I gotta change that to it something else If I'm life. watching the movies, it confuses the hell out of me. <laughs> Like, I can't tell you, even my daughter, like, R2 would make a sound. She's like, Dada, your phone's going off. I'm like, no, nah, it's R2 making the sound. Um, anyway, point is, I think there's no doubt whatsoever, 100%, that The Shape of Water is going to take all this stuff. I got to yeah. disagree with Jay. I think that when it comes to acting, um, the acting awards, I think that we will get, uh, and not just from SAG, but I think for, for in, in the Oscars themselves, I think you'll see a lot of the performances. Like Sam Rockwell, mm -hmm. I think Francis McDormand will get yeah. the win. But I think that when you look at, if you're basing it off of like SAG, of all the, how it cleaned up last night, 
when you look at how the Oscars work, is that each category is kind of run by their peers. So a lot of the you know a lot of the actors really are going to hammer in and vote for those awards. Yeah. When it comes to the other stuff, whether it's producers, directors, I think that Del Toro will be recognized for his work. Yeah, I think the overall production, the shots, the director, photography for Shape, Shape of Water. Water. I think that Best Picture will go to Shape of Water. I think that there's going to be more people that want to recognize what Del Toro is is doing right now than I do sh um, billboards. Uh, Schnepp, the Directors Guild, which is something I know you're very interested in, their awards go out February 2nd, so we're not quite February there 3rd. yet. Uh, but February, early February is when those awards go out. Do you think that it's going to be Shape of Water, or are you looking more towards Jay Washington's Three Billboards in Ebbing, Missouri? That's the new name of the movie, by the Jay way. Washington, Jay Washington presents right? Three, Three Billboards, Billboards in Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, I believe it'll be Guillermo, because I mean, I was looking at the, the DGA nominations, or Guillermo, Greta Gerwig, um, McDonough for Three Billboards, Christopher Nolan for Dunkirk, and Jordan Peele for Get Out. So, um, you know, which was a surprising that uh, some of those were surprises, like Spielberg didn't get nominated, a bunch of stuff like that. But I agree. Jordan with Peele all of those. get directed for uh, yeah, get nominated for yeah, Oscar for the DGA. Yeah. Um, so I feel no, you but, think he's going to get nominated for the Oscar um, for Best Director. You got yeah. five slots. So I, I, I think there, I you think there's what? room for to, him. To be honest with you, I, I got to say I think Get Out is a better directed film than The Post. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my in my eyes, and I think Spielberg is one of the greatest living directors around. But I feel like The Post is not one of his greatest films. It's not, it's a good film. Right. Um, will the Academy recognize Peel over Spielberg? That's the, again, well going to, talking about peer, uh, peers and there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing I'm to do saying with race. I I'm do. About. I'm saying I do. I don't know about the rest of the Academy. Right. But uh, I'm just you know, curious what everybody thought. The, about the way right. that the way that you could go with that though, the, the rationale I think a lot of uh, Oscar voters might have is that well, if we nominate Get Out because we have ten slots for that, we nominate that for Best Picture. That's a win in and of itself, getting Get Out recognition. <laughs> but we can't. We, we wouldn't dare get Spielberg out of that's Best what I'm Director. Saying, right. I, th I, th I, I I would rather see Get Out no nominated for Best Director. I'd rather see Peel in I there than agree. Spielberg. I happen to agree. With, with Schnepp and you, I just. But I, I think the post overall, was a tremendously directed film too. Yeah. I think they're. I think they're about time. I in think, my book. but I think with the change that the Academy is having as a whole, you know, with its whole diversity and its ways, look outlook of things different. More voters of different backgrounds. backgrounds. Yeah. Jordan Peele being the first time movie, movie director with this, right. and making such a hit that the world is talking about. The Academy can't deny it. Well, you hope so, but the, the counter to that is also then Greta Gerwig should be uh, recognized oh, absolutely. as well. For, for Lady Bird, I 100% right. I, I agree with you, but I think that Gerwig should also, she, she was, I think, I think she should have been nominated over Ridley Scott for Golden Globes. I, I and agree. and she, because you look at first time director, maybe not the type of box office to say Get Out mm -hmm. had, but it certainly had that critically acclaimed. I mean, it was like 100% for like weeks. Right. And it is a very special movie. It is very different. It's, it's her first, I believe. Yeah. Um, and she is, one. yeah, and she should be recognized also. So you're saying as far as recognizing, it's not just a matter of recognizing diversity and gender. It's about uh, recognizing talent and what you're able to do. And as a first time director, both Peel and Gerwig, over certain directors, just because of their body of work, I don't think that it should be that. That should be it. Like Spielberg and Ridley can sit this one out. Let Peel and Gerwig. Because well, yeah, we're not voting yeah. on bodies of work. Yeah. We're not. No, it's one, it's one we're, we're not. No, right. Yeah. We're not. And hopefully they're not because you shouldn't. Know, you shouldn't vote on bodies of work because no, it's Oscars not in the year. They, but they Oscars, do, unfortunately, yeah, they do. Which is, yeah. and it's horrible because we're not talking about bodies of work in each individual year. We're talking about whatever that particular artist has done that year. You know what's sad about that also because there's there's two sides to that because. I I, I again agree with you, but the other part of this is that Gary Oldman will most likely win Best Actor. Right, right that's pretty sure. Right, and I believe that he should 100. percent I also watch for it on social media. Watch for it in the comments. Oh, it's gonna go crazy. People, people are gonna say he won, which is not the case for this at all because he's never. Because we talked about it on shows that say like he he just hasn't won an award before. It might add to it. I think if it, I mean, I, and I mentioned this on Schmoes last week. If it comes down to a tie, where it's like, oh man, I, I think Timothy Chalamet and Gary Oldman, I think their performance was of the exact same caliber. Which one has been working in Hollywood for forty years and hasn't gotten a win yet? Gary Oldman gets it. I, I think you should yeah. get it. Anyway. I would say Best Picture. I think Greta Gerwig and Jordan Peele did an incredible job in their first feature films and directing. But Guillermo del Toro's film, if I if I didn't know who they were and I watched all three of those films, I'd say that's the better film. That's better directed. I mean, I think. Do you think that that goes Shape also to your incredible. taste too? Because when I see A Shape of Water, I think of you immediately. Like that's you. Because that, my mother in law. I'm serious. My mother in law saw it that's last a, night. When I see that no, fish no. creature, no, no, I think of John. I say that, I, but I say that because I know you so well, and I right. know that that's the type of stuff like you like. The weird stuff and you like the fantasies and, yeah. and like those kind of fairy tales and it's a brilliant film but then you look at some my mother-in-law right over her head right like, you know it's just like ah uh, that was just a cartoon <laughs> and, and, 
and, and you know, it's like so. I mean, in fairness, Pat ain't hitting a lot of fastballs when no, it comes to no, movies. No, so. no, but she no, but she loved three billboards. She okay, loved three see. billboards. Oh, there's right. a, and that was a bit of a kinky film. I was like, no, no, it's kinky is the word. But but anyway, I point, miss you, Pat. Yeah, but the point is, is that I'm curious to where the Academy voters land sure. because there's some people that flock to it. you, Riley. Like I like the movie a lot. Mm. I think that it should be. Recognize, I think it probably should win. It you don't wasn't think on it's my in the same three billboards. Thing, like I liked it better than three billboards, honestly, because three billboards for me, I loved up until the very ending, and I know that's that's really how you meter this movie. If you love the ending, mm. you love the movie, movie. Right. Yeah. yeah. And because I I left, I just don't like movies in general to where like you figure it out. What did they do? And <laughs> that, I'm that just like, the ending has people a little divided. Really? I've noticed yeah. people I I've talked ending, to. So we'll talk about it, guys. But I don't yeah. want to go. Yeah. And it's yeah. a little yeah. bit like, like like the ending of Birdman, <laughs> where, where people thought it was a great movie, but then you leave, and then you're like, right. well, well, let's talk about that. And, and Questions. So yeah. either way, I think it could go. I, I think either movie, it, w it wouldn't be a problem with either movie uh, getting nominated or, or winning. But I do like, I love the fact that there's ten movie slots to be nominated so you can throw in something if you do not have the opportunity to nominate a Jordan Peele or a Greta Gerwig or even a Steven Spielberg their movies all deserve to be nominated for best picture in my opinion and because we have the 10 slots hopefully we see something else creep in there that you wouldn't expect to see nominated for best picture are you about to move on because I wanted to say something before you do uh you have the floor okay I, I totally forgot to do this beforehand I sent Cody uh the picture too to let everybody know that this Friday so we can have awards we've got the Whoa! movie trivia showdown awards are gonna be on. Yay! They're gonna be on this Friday. Sorry, Mark, I totally forgot about it. We're gonna show you know it. No, we have a section in the show where we actually plug. We don't do that anymore. Events. We don't yeah. do that anymore, do we? I thought that. I thought you got rid of that. Yeah, no, it doesn't. No, you're gonna. Hey, I'm welcome. I'm Chris. I'm new to the show. <laughs> but we are very excited about the 2017 showdown awards. It was our fourth season, and we, there was a whole lot of greatness that yeah. happened all last year. These are the awards honoring the best and the brightest, and some of the the dullest minds in the movie trivia showdown. Make sure you guys watch it. A lot of fireworks could ensue. That is. Friday, dropping Friday afternoon. Yeah, and you're hosting it. Oh, dear God. Telling All a right. monologue and doing a, the whole thing uh, right up top. It's like, I'm going to have to get Political. Josh McCuga to get that suit dry clean yeah. for me. Our next story is about the box office, as we love to do each and every Monday. We are live. We recap the weekend that was at the box office. Jumanji, welcome to the jungle. No surprise, taking the top spot yet again. 20 million <laughs> big ones, adding to its haul over $316 million domestically. Wow. And Ooh. its worldwide climb is almost $790 million. I want to say. 12 Strong came in at a solid number two, $16.5 million, followed closely by Den of Thieves with $15.32 million. At number four is Steven Spielberg's The Post, a little over $12 million. And The Greatest Showman, people are seeing it nine times, $11 million. John Schnepp, what stands out to you about the weekend that was at the movies? The Paddington 2 is number six. Mm. That's what's coming back. Because <laughs> it's Climbing. coming back. It's, sl it's slowly growing as I saw it on $8.2 $8. million. Yeah, yeah, so I think people are like, word of mouth is getting out there. If you want to see a lovely, heartwarming film, see Paddington 2 and, and you take everybody. So that's how I feel about it. Um, Den of Thieves and 12 Strong, which one, if I was going to see either of those films, would you guys suggest? As someone who has not seen 12 Strong but has seen Den of Thieves, I think it's a solid action movie. I'm hearing really good things about 12 Strong, though. Um, so I'm not saying it's this year's 13 hours, but I hear it could be a, a good war kind of movie. But Den of Thieves is something that I think will engage you and probably won't make you fall asleep. Okay. Uh, Christian, which one of these flicks do you need to check out now? Well, I mean, I think you look at this list in general, and it's a good January... It's a good January weekend. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing huge, but I mean, Jumanji's the story. There's no, we were talking about it before. Yeah. Yeah. Jumanji's <laughs> the story. We're going to talk about it a little bit more. But I think that with Jumanji, what happened is when the initial announcement comes out, I was like, oh, they're remaking Jumanji. Why? And then you hear that it's not a remake, that it is a continuation, but they're not going to try to tie too much into it. They're going to mm. take their own spin. And then you see the movie. And I'm telling you, I laughed more at certain parts of Jumanji than I have in most comedies in a very long time. Wow. I was, it was done really well. It was, it just, I, I liked the movie. I thought it was a fun time. Now the other ones I want to see, I'm, I'm happy for both 12 Strong and, um, and Den of Thieves because they're movies that you think are probably going to bomb because who the hell are, are going to see these movies in January? Why do you care? And after $15 million opening weekend for both of these things is, is, is decent. So... But the, uh, the greatest showman on earth, you ain't kidding. People, people who love this movie have they seen it, to like see it again. 20 times. It's, it's like, made over $113 million. Worldwide. Uh, no, it, domestically. Domestically? Yeah. Wow. It's, really? it, it's been killing. Look, that wow, and Jumanji have been killing it since yeah. 
Christmas, Jay. I mean, you just feel bad for that cute little Paddington bear. It's just waddling into this, and he can't quite get in the top five because these leftovers from the holidays <laughs> are still raking in the dough. I think we just need more John Schnepp endorsements of Paddington, too. <laughs> yeah. And give, yeah, yeah. But I also need to get Roka and his whole weird, like, you know, <laughs> showman Paddington. team. Like, oh, go see with a, Paddington. With a vest go. on and yeah. a Superman shirt. Right. Listen. <laughs> but greatest show when people are loving the music. Musicals are coming back in full force. Right. And people are showing that the, everybody I know has seen Greatest Showman. They're like, I love it. Gotta go see it again and mm. again and again. Den of Thieves, it's an action movie. It's a bank heist. It's another film that's like, hey, we got Gerard Butler under contract. What right. do we do? <laughs> <Right. It's> Geostorm <laughs> 2. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. Hey, we got this other one. Yeah. Then you get, then you're trying to do something with Ice Cube's son. It's like different things. I'm just laughing. I think after you saying that, I just pictured Gerard Butler waking up. Where do I got to go today? <laughs> 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 He's under contract. <laughs> yeah, you got to do a store movie today. What about tomorrow? Ah, Rob, Rob something. And after that, some romantic comedy. You're coming back. He- Heigl's back on set. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It kind of looks like that, no? These. It kind of looks like right my shield. Right. Yeah. You died, Dead Wolf. He starts doing Geostorm 2 uh, dialogue during <laughs> Dead of Thieves. Yeah. You, you would notice it, and he drinks different beer in this movie than he right. does in Geostorm. Yeah. He's a Coors Light man in Geostorm. In this one, he's more of like a Heineken kind of guy. Yeah, he has no idea what's Who paid me to drink this particular right. beer? Well, some people might be drinking the Kool Aid on Maze Runner, The Death Cure. It comes out this weekend in theaters. Do you guys think that has a shot at topping Jumanji? Look, Jumanji's been in the top five forever. Ever. $20 million this weekend. Is Maze Runner the Death Cure going to be the one that finally knocks it out of the top spot? Yes. I think it'll it'll knock it out. I mean, that that's not really saying that it's going to destroy. I think that... And it's not, a, it's not a disservice to Jumanji either. No, it's not at all. Jumanji's forever, been yeah. in there forever. It's at $30 million. It'll probably do... Jumanji will probably do like 18 next weekend. And, and Maze Runner will probably do like 23, 24. Yeah. You see Maze Runner taking the day, John Schnepp? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I haven't seen the other two Maze Runners. I'm that trilogy type of dude with these kind of... Wait till the third movie, and I'll see all of them. But uh, actually, I actually haven't even seen Jumanji yet. That's, a, that's the that. one out of all these films I haven't seen besides the musical, you know, I'm in the circus. I haven't seen the, you know, Jumanji Dude, yet. Say, so, I'm in yeah. The yeah, that's like... But that's Roka <laughs> this morning. He's like, hey, I'm in, in the, the circus. circus. That was, like, that was uh, the working uh, title of the film. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the circus <laughs> starring <laughs> John Roka. I think Roka just wants one honest shot of being a musical. Oh, I think yeah. that that's what all of this is I all about. I was in about. theater school with him. He, he, he that guy what? is, a, yeah, at Florida State. Does he have two left feet? What's that? Does he have two left feet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. He, 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 I swore Duncan Is he a young Gene yeah. Kelly in the making? <laughs> well, Yes. Do you have footage? Do Does he curse footage? everybody no, out when he misses dance steps? Well, no, it's it, well, yeah, he, starts, <laughs> he starts hazing them in the middle yeah. of it, so yeah, he's screaming <laughs> at them. It's true. All right, we're going to move on. I'm going to remind you guys that uh, John Schnapp's little movie that he's honking, Paddington 2, right now, 169 reviews counted on Rotten Tomatoes, 100% fresh. Wow. So, Jeez, wow. Well, you just jinxed it now. Now some one jerk is going to go, <laughs> Somebody that's tell fair. Go. I hate marmalade. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paddington. Somebody tell me where to find marmalade at in the hood, please. I think marmalade is all hood. over. I, I, in, in, hood. in hood. You might have to take a trip. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, the hop and Amtrak. And, uh, it, it, it's like, yeah. I want to know, can I go to my local corner store, you know what I'm saying, give me, you know what I'm saying, a nice little bottle, and then get some marmalade and some 99 cent toast and just run with it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no? No? Okay, next door. Sounds like a good Kickstarter <laughs> opportunity in 2018. We are going to move on to a beloved segment, a new segment, Agree or Disagree. We'll give a sentence, a premise, something, and the panel will agree or disagree with that sentiment. First up is going to be Sword in the Stone, the classic. Disney animated movie that is a part of Christian and I's collective childhood is being made into a live action movie and the Hollywood Reporter is saying that 28 weeks later Helmer Juan Carlos Fresnadillo is in negotiations to helm it the live action reimagining of the 1963 animated fantasy now Brian Cogman the writer producer of Game of Thrones wrote the script for the project so now it's being produced by the Jungle Books Brigham Taylor a good team so far here's the rub Stone is the second Arthurian project that the studio is currently developing as it is also working on the Merlin saga with Ridley Scott in talks to direct. So, look, Jay Washington, I grew up loving Sword in the Stone. It's one of my favorite Disney animated movies. Mm-hmm. But are we in need of a live action Sword in the Stone, especially if we're also getting the Merlin saga directed by Ridley Scott? And also that we had Guy Ritchie's King Arthur earlier. It, we're, it's a different studio, but we it still have that not, taste in our mouth. I, we don't think we need it. Are these two are not going to connect? By, do we know if they're going to connect? They're not going to connect at all. No now. shared universe? No shared no. universe? No. So, right. Why do we need both of them? We don't need both. Just do one. You can do the Sword and the Stone 
edge it a little bit, tweak the script, and then make Merlin's Rise within it. You don't need a whole different movie for that. And you're saying you'd rather see Sword in the Stone than you would yeah. see the Merlin Saga. Christian, do you agree with that, that Sword in the Stone should be the Arthurian-style project that Disney is working on? I agree with Jay 100%. I think that it, Ridley Scott... I like Ridley Scott, and I think that you know if you look at a lot, we still he's back in our uh, on the top pedestal now because of The Martian, because yeah. he was he was very low, and then you you certainly didn't like his last movie. I did. Uh, no, 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 sorry, not his last movie. Alien, Alien Covenant, Covenant, not a fan. Uh, I am yeah. with you on that one. Now I didn't mind that movie. I but, liked it, but again, I didn't like what Ridley Scott did when he took over um, Robin Hood. Um, I didn't. I right. wasn't a big fan of that, and I think that Disney has a good lock on bringing in. Different kind of visionary directors, whether it's a, you know John Favreau for well, the stuff that he's done with what well, we've seen already, the footage that we saw with Lion King, but obviously what he did with Jungle Book and that team. Um, you get the writer of uh, Game of Thrones, and this director might have a, a good vision of what this could do. I would much rather see Sword in the Stone because I like the idea of Arthur as a kid and how and how the way that they put a little. There's going to be a little bit more lightheartedness to it. There's going to. I want to see a little bit of that Disney feel because mm. that was what I liked about Sword of the Stone. And I think I'd rather. I think that that's what Arthur needs right now. I think we've seen people attempt to try to do the Arthur version of the Excalibur thing, um, and it hasn't worked. Right. And maybe, it's not to say it can't work. It just hasn't worked yet. So give me that. Give me that version of it and saying going off of what he, Jay just said, let's take then more ideas and you can franchise it because like Cinderella, it's done afterwards. You know, like they want to do more with Maleficent, even though I don't think they should, but they could. You can do more with this franchise. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem with most Disney movies is that they end happily ever after, so you don't want to mess with that. Right. So you might have to go back and be a prequel like what Maleficent was. Shinab, I want to pick up on something that Christian said is that we may be sick of the 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 badass, I just pulled Excalibur, look at how shredded my abs are, King Arthur. Does this version of the Arthurian legend where you have young Wart and he's going to get into some adventures with a talking owl and a crazy wizard named Merlin, is the family-friendly version of this movie going to be profitable? I think it's a, the better of the two ideas. I mean, I just saw all the money in the world, and I found it to be quite lacking. I mean, I'm glad that he recast Kevin Spacey, and I, you know, I'm for all those those efforts. But then when you actually see the movie, it's a bit inert. You know what I'm saying? It's like just like not as not like the post also has that kind of like I'm just following these news bits, and I never got into any of the characters. Mm -hmm. There's not enough depth there. Depth there, but uh, I don't I don't really feel like Ridley Scott is on point. At this point, yeah. you know, uh, I would personally just like him to, to, hey, can you finish that weird engineer Prometheus thing? I know you guys hating on Alien Covenant, but I want to see it no, like do, do, do the full yeah. circle. <laughs> Why? Just because I want to see that full circle go back to the original I Alien instead you. of being like yeah. lost in space okay. or whatever. That's just personally greedily. That's what I want. But um, look, the Sword in the Stone is the better of the ideas. I've seen Excalibur. That's the ultimate version for me of the King Arthur, the Arthurian tale. I'd like to see Camelot 3000, which is a DC Comics adaptation of the King Arthur. You know, those are the things I want to see. The King Arthur movie that Guy Ritchie did was horrible. I, I mean, I felt like I was like, am I watching a commercial? It felt, it was like so disjunctively edited and it's just a re, it's a gigantic mess. It's a train wreck. It's an embarrassment to the to the King Arthur, to the tale of, of Merlin and all the knights. I think it's horrible. See, I actually enjoyed it for what it Jesus was, great. but it cost a lot of money to make. And even watching the movie and enjoying it for what I was like, there's no studio should have greenlit this movie for that amount of cash. Here's right. the interesting thing though, is that this movie by all accounts said to be more aimed towards kids and being a family friendly movie movie like what the Jungle Book live action was or Cinderella or what the Lion King or Mulan are going to be. However, they got the director from 28 weeks later in talk. So right. how would you rectify that? Is, this guy is the right choice for Sword uh, of Stone or is it a little confessing? The knights are just running around beating the hell out of people <laughs> in their foreheads with this thing called rage. I don't know what you want out of this, but uh, that you, again, we said that with different directors, you give them an opportunity to do different genres. So you don't just hold them to what they've done in the past. Maybe he has a vision. He's talked to Disney and mm -hmm. said, this is what I want to do. And this is how I'll execute it. Because, of course, you bring up that you've done 28, week, 28 weeks later. We know what that movie was. We we just don't want everybody getting beaten in the head with a, sto with a stone before you get the sword <laughs> out of it. We just don't need that. I think and that's then, unfair to the director, though, too, for everybody. In fact that, <laughs> like, to say just because he's, his, his right. other movie that he did is that he's automatically going to bring in things from a different script. Right. I mean, I think that you look at you look at what he can do and you see you see the way that he executed a movie. And I think that that's also what makes a good executive and a good producer is you see a vision from a director and you say, okay, well, you were given that script and that's how you executed that script. 
here's this script. Can you make this work? And now it's the director's for to say, I don't want to do family friend friendly because I want people's heads to get cut off. Right. But they're also blend in between Disney. Maybe they want to make it a little not less family friendly than the animated, but maybe just go a little bit in between. Make it a little bit more horror fantasy, but keep the the PG thirteen. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we're, I'm guilty of like you know bashing on Flashpoint because they got these co comedy directors, but mm -hmm. at the same time, they could maybe like, look, they, they pitch it, they have this whole other part of their their directing skills that they haven't played out yet. So, you know, every single person, like they've done one thing and they could always do another. We, I don't want to box anybody in. So just just saying, guilty as charged, but like, look, it's easy to do that, especially like the 28, day, 28 weeks later, guys, like what's gonna, zombies <laughs> fighting Merlin? <laughs> well, no, no zombies are in there. Well. It's easy to think yeah, yeah. that that's why they're going Look for the it. the Russo brothers. Yeah, I mean, right exactly. away when the Russo brothers get announced, people are like, the comedy guys? Yes, yeah. And look at them. I mean, they're probably the, some of the best directors that we've mm -hmm. seen so far in the Again, MCU. Again, Captain America Winter Soldier is one of the greatest movies ever. It's my favorite <laughs> Marvel movie. My, my favorite Marvel I movie. I think the Sword of Stone might it benefit just from being another animated version of it. Like, I love the original animated version, but I have no problem with them updating or doing more modern kind of uh, animation styles you and telling that story again will, because I do think you need some sort of separation from the Ridley, or not the Ridley Scott, the, uh, the Guy Ritchie version we just got. Will you sing? Will you sing for the sword? No, no, please don't make him do it. Please yeah. don't do it. For, don't I, do it. I want to hear more. Oh, oh, Lord, now we talked lower. That was such a bad decision. That was such a bad decision. That was such a bad decision. I love that. I'm sorry. Well, let's do the one thing I am good at, and that is delivering the news to you fine people. Our next story, also from The Hollywood Reporter, involves a couple news broadcasters you may have heard of, Walter Cronkite and Dan Rather. Logan Lerman is now set to play Dan Rather, the iconic newscaster in the real-life drama called News Flash. He's going to star alongside Rogan, who's going to be playing Walter Cronkite. David Gordon Green is directing the movie. The film will recount the events of November 22nd, 1963, as TV news stations race to report the facts of President John F. Kennedy's assassination in Dallas, Texas. The release date has not been targeted at this time. It's a very interesting story that when we talked about News Flash being a project in development, I was pretty intrigued by Schnapp. I mean, right. this is basically going to be how newsrooms react to breaking news. Maybe the most uh, it's it, one of the titular events of the 20th century was not only the assassination of JFK, but how it was handled, how it was reported, how facts got out to the public back in 1963. A lot of moving parts and the TV stations. I think there's going to be a lot of drama involved with yeah. racing to get it in front of the camera. How do you feel about Logan Lerman taking on the role of Dan Rather? Well, I think Dan Rather should be pleasantly surprised and pleased with the casting. You know, so I think <laughs> Logan's a nice looking young man. It's like, all right, he's, they cast the good version. <laughs> Dan Rather's looking in the mirror, it's like, eh, they got it right. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, easy, right. easy. I'm sure Walter Cronkite was like, I don't look like Seth Rogen. But this is like, <laughs> you flip it, they're like, yeah, it's a, look, get Lerman in there. He's a close approximation of my jangly right. face. Uh, aside from that. Was bail not yeah. available? Yeah, well, yeah. Where's Brad Pitt? He's the perfect newsman to be me. Uh, I, I don't know why I'm doing the newsy voice. Those guys sudden. might more be like, how about Spencer Tracy? Where's he? Uh, yeah, right. Is he still yeah. there? Is Walter, Walter Matthau available? <laughs> is that a different time zone, Somebody dude. get Bob Hope out here. Yeah, <laughs> Bing Crosby, baby. Um, I love the idea. I think that's, uh, I'm hoping that it all takes place within one 24-hour cycle. I think that's the kind of excitement level we're going to see. It's a little different than the post where they're covering like something that took many, many months to get through, or at least weeks to get through. Um, this is something that really, when it happened, people were like stunned. It destroyed our nation for multiple weeks, months, years, for in certain ways, for ever, you know? And I think it's a very important thing. So, you know, I wasn't around when Dan Rather was talking about our Walter Cronkite, but I've Prove seen it. some of the. I know. <laughs> I was around. If I you see a driver's <laughs> license. If you do uh, your due diligence and you go back and you watch the Walter Cronkite's broadcast of the events, Dan Rather, very interesting backstory story time for 30 seconds so dan rather was actually in the motorcade in dallas texas that day he was a few cars behind jfk's and so when it happened everybody immediately bolted and panicked because they thought they were all targets too so rather takes off out of the car and goes running the the car ended up following the motorcade to the hospital that's where another newscaster for cbs went and that's why he was at the hospital he was one of the first people to hear doctors say that jfk had died dan rather meanwhile being the newsman that he is and uh, judge him how you want he went right to the Dallas TV station because he knew something had happened involving a shooting and the president. So he was just waiting for information. He was ready to broadcast the day of. Now, the interesting wrinkle in all this is that Dan Rather is one of the very few people who ever lived who got to see the Zabruder
Magruder film, Uncut. When he reported about how JFK's head moved, it does not jive at all with what you see in the Zapruder film. So uh, it, it's a tough thing to watch in the moment, Christian, and say, oh, yeah, his head went forward or no way. Did it go backward? I don't know how many times he watched the Zapruder film. It's interesting to me as a JFK buff and a conspiracy theorist to some degree that Dan Rather is in this movie at all or that they're going to be using his coverage of the news as well as Walter Cronkite's. That was a little, a little tangent. You yeah. don't need to go down and follow me. But Logan Lerman playing Dan Rather. Uh, I mean, do I agree that he should be with him? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that he should be. And I'll tell you why. Another reason that I'm so glad they're doing this. for, And if there are any comments in, in today's chat or in general that people ask, like, should we be doing another Kennedy story? The answer is yes, because... This is, this is like someone like Seth Rogen and Logan Lerman, younger generation. Let's keep teaching the other generations mm -hmm. about what's ha what had happened to John F. Kennedy, you know, like, and things again, whether it's, it's the conversation, like, I know that you're very much, like, you, you study this, and I, obviously from, the, from what you just said there, like, more people should know about events like this and the understanding of how these particular people report on it, what the nation was like, because there are people that, you know, when you're learning, obviously, in, in schools, they, it goes in. <laughs> One ear and it goes right out the other one. And sometimes I was just having this conversation with my with my daughter yesterday. It's like, and and my wife is that it's when for some movies do teach people things as well. And you know, when they're movies like this, it is very helpful. You should keep telling. You now, like Arthur, we shouldn't keep telling the same one every two months, but you should be <laughs> telling the same types of stories mm -hmm. over a course of years. So, and Logan Lerman is the type of actor. He's he's an up and coming. Uh, he still is an up and coming actor, and he is he's got a lot of talent. So I want to see what he can do, and I wonder how he is at movie trivia. Ooh, well, I Just wonder saying. if we'll ever get to find out that question. Uh, he's got his finger on the pulse of the chat room because a lot of people are saying, Jeff, that they're not Jeff. Uh, Jeff <laughs> That was awesome. That's so weird. That's your name. You know, nobody even in you the know, studio. Yeah. You know now all of social media is going to yeah. be calling yeah. you Jeff. Hey, give it up for Jeff Watson. <laughs> Jeff Washington, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Washington. All I'm saying you, is that if Twitter had banned me for a week, I might have changed my name to Jeff Washington. See if I can get back there earlier. In the meantime, Hashtag JFK, Jeff. another guy's not named Jeff. <laughs> Do you feel like we have too many JFK movies or too many no. things floating around with the story? that you see i mean you can see the stephen king movie you know or the the tv show mm -hmm. that's on amazon there's a lot of jfk material to digest is this going to be too much that's just why i agree i agree with christian there's so much to digest there's a whole new generation who has to learn about this it's an important part of history a president was assassinated and we need to know from all accounts different things there was a bunch of files that were just released people who never knew about it who are now on the internet scrambling to read about it in the chat room right now on youtube people are like yeah this happened and that happened people are talking about it now so why not have a movie that'll reach the masses with that you see what i'm saying and yeah logan lerman is a younger guy so he'll appeal to that younger generation everybody who watched percy jackson would be like yo percy right. covering the news <laughs> 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 and you get him and then yeah. seth rogan i just don't want to go what's happening he was good he was good in jobs i mean i get he yeah, was yeah. good that but i just don't want to be a no. well, look, he looks a lot like dan rather too look at that little that, that looks <laughs> just like logan lerman doesn't well, it? you know you know what's funny also is i'm sure i'm wondering if if in the chat room or other places where people respond to Mm. Well, they can just go watch JFK, or they can watch this, or they can watch that. People are lazy. Yeah, you know it's like people yep. people don't go all the time. Not everyone goes and and will go on streaming to watch it. I'm going to watch something on JFK. But yeah. if it's in the theater, oh, Seth Rogen's what's the new Seth Rogen movie? Uh, the Seth Rogen movie actually he is going to be in this film. I don't look and Logan Lerman's yeah. in there. Then maybe they go out and see it because they're trying to entice you now to teach you the story with these new kind of younger talent. They were debating whether we need a new JFK movie in the chat room. Now they're just saying. Hashtag call me Jeff. Okay. Yeah, that's what I call Jeff Shot JFK. <laughs> agree, or, agree or disagree with Jay Washington's new name. Uh, you guys can tweet us at the end of the show at Collider Video. We're going to take some of your live Twitter questions and close out the show with that hashtag Collider Movie Talk. Makes it easy for this, Jeff, to find your question. <laughs> Meantime, one more agree or disagree, and that would be the new Rampage TV spot. An extended trailer dropped yesterday during the NFC Championship game featuring The Rock, amongst others. The film is based on the 1986 video game. It stars The Rock as primatologist David Okoye a man who shares an unshakable bond with George, the extraordinary intelligent silverback gorilla who has been in his care since birth, but a rogue genetic experiment <gasps> has gone awry and it transforms the gentle ape into a raging monster. Rampage opens in theaters on April 20th of this year. Jay Washington is Rampage, going to be the biggest hit in The Rock's career to date. Uh, if Jumanji stopped making money, 
Because <laughs> Jumanji's killing in the box office. It depends. It nobody, but nobody thought Jumanji would make that much. And this movie is coming out on four twenty. It's about a giant gorilla, <laughs> a giant wolf, and the rock. I see where you're going. You know exactly where I'm going with this. Going. Imagine the crowd. And it's can, legal now. And it's legal. <laughs> some places. It's, it's not, legal. Not all 50 states run out. Right, that's true. Look, okay. Hey, but if you're in California. Right. Hmm. It's going to do well in California. It's going to do very, because you're going to, because that's one of those movies you, that, that type yeah. of crowd will bring out. Right. Dude, you see this big ass gorilla? <laughs> right. It was on the building. Then the wolf flies. Think about it. Well, yeah, of yeah. course. So there's a, so those are action attributes that, along with The Rock, who is one of the biggest action stars to date, bring is a revenue generator right there. See, so I don't you. know. You're making my point for me. Yeah, but I don't know if it'll beat Jumanji. I, look, look, J- Jumanji's a juggernaut. There's no question about that. Over 300 million dollars domestically. But Christian, not only is this movie coming out on 420, so <laughs> all of you uh, marijuana cigarette enthusiasts can enjoy the movie time and time again without mm-hmm. remembering you saw it in the first place. You also <laughs> have this as the unofficial kickoff of the summer, a lot like what the Fast and Furious movies right. do when they mm-hmm. open in yeah. April. So you have a great release date where you're not competing with Avengers: Infinity War yet. You have a couple weeks just to yourself to be the guy the rock gets bigger and bigger jumanji only raises his profile more so i think that there is some indication that it could be do you agree with that uh it could be but i'm gonna agree more with jeff i think that uh (laughs) i I think that there's there's a jumanji is gonna be hard to catch up to for what it has done now if april if, if if you if it can do what fast and furious did and because rock is in those movies Mm -hmm. It's got a shot. I'll tell you, I have never, I'd never seen any of the trailers yet um, until today. I watched both the TV spot and I watched mm-hmm. the, the the last one. I wish I would have seen this trailer already because I would have put it in my most anticipated. This movie looks like a blast, and San Andreas was a blast. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this same director, same director. Yeah. So yeah. to see, and I loved the game. I loved the game as a kid. I played it all the time when I went to the arcade, and to have, um, and to have. The Rock in this movie, and, and and also to hear the way that The Rock has been speaking about this film, you can always tell. I mean, The Rock's never a guy that's not going to give his all, but you can always tell when he's a little bit more enthused about movies than yeah. when he's just kind of selling it. Right. He was selling Baywatch. He's enthused about Jumanji, and he's enthused about this film. Yeah. So that gives me hope. Um, it's got a shot to be his most <laughs> profitable, but Jumanji's kind of a kind of a phenom. Okay, so it seems like Jumanji is winning the debate thus far. John Schnapp, do you want to? throw your hat in the ring and say that Rampage is going to be the biggest hit in The Rock's career. No, it will not be the biggest hit in The Rock's career by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, I love the game Rampage. When I first heard he was attached, I was like, well, that's the way you sell the Rampage mm-hmm. game because it's like those three creatures oh, smashing so buildings and stuff. But we, when we are like talking about it, you see the ape like smashing yep. it. Yep. They're like, that's exactly <laughs> what you do in the game. <laughs> that side, yeah. you know, like, I just want to see the ape punch through and like get a somebody else. So the oh, lizard, yeah. someone's got to eat. The lizard's got to eat something. Yeah, the wolf <laughs> yeah. and the, the crocodile. Right. I just want to know yeah. how they sold that. I want to see a lot of dead human beings getting eaten. You got to eat somebody. Eat somebody. I know, yeah. but it's, how do you sell it? Listen, I know you might not be strong on this. But the ape has to eat somebody. Right. Yeah. I don't want to. He wasn't the only one that ate people. No, the though. ape. Just, yeah, not oh, the ape. Okay. The other two. Okay, yeah. the wolf has to eat somebody. The wolf right, has right, to right, eat right. somebody. The wolf's right. going to be eating a lot of people because, yeah. look, look, we're rooting against the wolf. Sorry, all the wolves watching right now. I love George. you in the gray. You're rooting for George. Yeah. When you see this movie, you fall in love with George. When you see the commercial, yeah. I was at a bar watching the game yesterday. When this trailer came on, everybody fell in love with George. Yeah. And then we see what happens to George. We're rooting for George more than we are any <laughs> human in this movie. Well, well yeah. the thing is also that I when I had. I was always nervous going into this thing of how it was going to look. Yeah. CGI looks good. It looks, looks like really Dawn of the Planet of the Apes good. Like as yeah. far as like the the you know George, mm-hmm. I believe it. It, well, was, look, it wasn't one of those kind of. I was worried it's going to look like um, was was uh, not Joe. What was what was the uh, old school Joe movie? Mighty Joe Young. Mighty, Mighty Joe, Joe Young. Young. Thank yeah. you. I was afraid because it was going to look like the Charlie Theron. No, this is good. San Andreas. Like you said, it's the same director and the the CG and that was was top. You yeah. know, it was like it was really well done. This has more city destruction only with giant animals. Look, I'm going to see this and then Super Troopers 2. I'm like, or I don't know whether I should flip it on 420 see Super Troopers 2 <laughs> and then this, but it's going to be a puff. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go into that puffy <laughs> cinema. I'm like, yeah, oh, where's a... The purple puffy cinema is where I'm Who going. Who got right. Twizzlers, dog? Yeah. <laughs> Look, as much as I'd love to get excited for Rampage, making all the money in the world, I think it's going to do great for two weeks, and then Infinity War lands, and nothing is going to mm. stop that. Not Deadpool 2, right. not Han Solo. Mm-hmm. Those movies might make more money opening weekend, their respective weekend, be like than Rampage. Avengers does there, but yeah. I think Avengers is definitely going to be the Rampage. In a brand new segment that is uh, new to Christian Harloff, anyway, right. we have some things to plug. You guys can check out a new <laughs> video we have on Collider Vids right now. The Greatest Showman. Is it a good movie? 
or is it just catchy songs? A great debate was had. Subscribe right here to Collider Video for all the latest videos like John Schnepp's Heroes. What do we got on tap today? Oh, we got, uh, well, first of all, we got Jason Inman and Ashley V. Robinson returning. So that'll be a lot of fun. We're talking about DC's new slate, their new announcements. Yeah. A lot of stuff's been bubbling up, so excited to get all sweaty about that. And like Christian said earlier in the show, we do have the 2017 Movie Trivia Schmodown Awards for Season 4. All of 2017 will be awarded the best and the brightest this Friday. Christian, you also host Jedi Council. When are we seeing Han Solo trailer? I think we're going to see it this week. I think it's going to drop this week. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm crossing my fingers. I just think it, it doesn't make sense to debut it on Super Bowl. I don't think enough people will pay attention to, to the whole thing. You can't show a full trailer. I think you're only going to get a, 30 mm. seconds of a trailer. You want to show two minutes of a trailer, considering we're getting it in May. Show a 30-second trailer after you show the two-minute trailer. Show it this week. Debut it this week and then have the trailer be a part of the Super Bowl festivities. We are going to move on to live Twitter questions. We've got time for one today. You guys can always tweet us at Collider Video and we will take one of your suggestions like today. But before we did get to the question, Langley and Neil did appreciate the fact that when I called you, Jeff, and your response that we did a little bit of uh, coming to America no, no. sexual chocolate there. No, that boy's good. Yeah, okay, boy, we, I have Jay St. Clair, Jay Scott St. Clair, excuse me. If you could vacation, at any <laughs> fictional locale in any movie ever, what is your vacation destination spot? Who's got a good one, gentlemen? Where do you want to go? I'm going to Nabu. Mm. You going to Naboo? Yeah. Naboo, of all the places you could go, you don't want more of a fast paced Coruscant? Hell no, you don't I like go to, to Canto relax. Bite? No way. I like to relax. <laughs> Man, I'm, I got two kids. I want to lay down and just chill out. I don't want to go. I could have, 10 years ago, maybe I'm going to maybe going one of those other Coruscant, but I'm going to Naboo. I'm chilling out. I'm relaxing. I'm going to the fifth element, that weird, you know, strange place with yep. a woman singing with the blue, blue. Oh, that's where I'm going to go. Nice. Hang out there. I was just about to say, I'm going to Floss in Paradise <laughs> just so I can see the dudes of Plaba Laguna. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she's alive again or a new one was born just so you can do the Twitter. I like where your head's at. Um, I'm going Skull Island. I know it sounds weird, but I know it's weird. Mark, you're, you're walking into a trap. You're going to die. Yeah, I might perish. But before I perish, I get to see a giant ape. And that's what I've always wanted to do. Go to New Snep York. Wait for him to get to right. New York. And Snap and I get to see a blue chick with a long skull do this. Right? Yeah. And oh, 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 you would, that, you, that is the last place you would go. You would, you would, Skull Island? You would go, you would go to, to vacation. You okay, would vacation look, on Skull Island? You get eaten by yeah. a spider before you saw the giant <laughs> ape. I'm sure that, look, truth. you guys are giving Skull Island a bad rap, okay? I, I think that I'm sure there's nice parts of Skull Island. We're being realistic. Where they have like the Bora Bora houses. Yeah. I'm gonna say no. this to you as a friend. What? That is the whitest thing you've ever said. I'm sure there's <laughs> nice parts of Skull Island. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, just it's a little gorilla just running right. around. I'm going to Hobbiton. Sure maybe. You're the nice first one dead Island. in the movie. You get all the <laughs> yeah. you want. After listening to you guys, you should be going to uh, the Hobbiton. Like, you should, and that way, then you can watch. Then you can watch Rampage with the Hobbits be stoned out of your gourd. <laughs> I thought about going to the Shire. I thought about going to the Shire okay, yeah. because I'd be like the tallest guy there. Like I would dominate the rec basketball <laughs> leagues, they drink every night. So the only hesitation I have, and I'd probably have you the same problem that's going. On. I have little <laughs> tiny uh, presidential <laughs> hands, but I think that what? <laughs> just little tiny. Cocktail weenies on. <laughs> These aren't even. When I was born, my fingers were born on my feet and my toes were born on my hands. It's a weird condition. What? I have. what? Yeah. Jeff, we've been talking about this for a while. You know. <laughs> what better way to wrap up a great episode of Movie Talk than to get. Say goodbye to Jeff, to John Jeff, to Christian. I'm going to go get these tiny little cocktail weenies into some marmalade jars at our post-production meeting. You guys have yourselves a great day. We'll be right back here tomorrow morning for another episode of Collider Movie Talk. Bye. My name is Jeff. Hey, everybody. Mark <laughs> Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here, or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.